Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to WNBA Recap. Uh, I'm Raymond Lyons. This is Wilson Tarpe Jr. I got three games on the schedule tonight per usual. A uh, couple games got some uh, familiar faces in new places, so uh, that should be interesting to talk about. Uh, just starting off with the first game, Connecticut versus Atlanta. Uh, Sun got the win, 93-82. to um, Kayla Charles got the start tonight. You know, and She actually ended up playing the most minutes for Connecticut. Um, yeah, but Connecticut with a 11 point victory. Uh, Alyssa Thomas, 21.7 rebounds. Um, Dewana Bonner had 12 and 9. You know, first time uh, Courtney Williams and Shakina Strickland get to see their old teammates. Uh, Courtney Williams, 12.7 rebounds. Uh, Shakina Strickland, 18 points. I uh, had six threes. Uh, big thing from this game, Kennedy Connor went down mm-hmm. in the first quarter with that ankle injury. Um, you know, hope. Really hope that's nothing serious because uh, she's been a joy to watch so far. But um, just tell me what you thought about this one. This one just honestly felt like Connecticut was just like we're. It just felt like I'm sick of losing, type of vibe from Connecticut. There was a possession. I, I'm sure folks saw it on Twitter, where Bonner missed the bunny, stayed with it, missed it again, stayed with it. It was kind of like and she had the greatest in the game, but she had nine boards. Kind of like mm-hmm. just the, whatever needs to be done to get a win. And obviously, what what definitely helps is Jasmine Thomas had a good night. Um, I know she had 15.7 assists, and you know Bonner and At kind of been the consistent things. One or the other has more points on a nightly basis. Bonner's going off scoring, but you know they're just starting to get consistently get more help. Like you mentioned about Kyla getting more time. Um, it felt like Connecticut's kind of done the opposite that some of the other teams have done with their depth. Where now they're really trying to lean on uh, the youth that they have. But some of the other teams kind of by design at times we're forced to let the kids get out there and just play early right um so it was a great opportunity for Kyla but uh yeah just Connecticut did a good job and they kind of they took control of the second and third quarters and they were able just to kind of take care of business and make sure they got out of there with the W um like you mentioned Shakina Strickland and Courtney Williams Shakina shot the heck off the ball um but you know Kennedy being missing is kind of a big thing right now where She's been a big part of a lot of what they do. Um, and while Courtney Williams is getting comfortable, I still don't think like she's all the way. I still don't feel like we've had that Courtney Williams game, right? Like that right. we've seen in Connecticut that that we haven't had that performance yet. Um, and shout out to Kalani Brown making her first appearance, I believe, for the dream. Uh, she had 13. But yeah, it just felt like Connecticut just had the vibes of uh, like they're over this losing thing, right? Like like we're it's not going to be because of a lack of effort, and that's all that jumped out to me tonight. Mm-hmm. Also, um, the the turnover differential kind of stuck out to me. Uh, Connecticut, they only had nine turnovers, forced Atlanta into nineteen turnovers. So, um, so yeah, that that just shows how scrappy they were on defense today. Uh, moving on to the next game, Phoenix Mercury versus the Dallas Wings. Uh, Phoenix got the win, ninety-one seventy-nine. Um, Another one, uh, Skylar Diggins face Skylar Diggins Smith facing her old team, and man, she had a night: twenty six points, five rebounds, seven assists. Uh, Brittany Griner, twenty two points, thirteen rebounds, five assists. Uh, for Dallas, um, Satu Sabali, fifteen points and ten rebounds. Like she, she's really starting to come on a little bit. Um, Arike at twenty two, uh, Alicia Gray seventeen to seven. Um, you know, for me in this one, it just. You know, seeing how uh, BG and Skylar got got busy, yeah. That Diana's gonna take her sweet time coming back. You know, she no rush. Like I'm pretty sure she she welcomes welcomes the rest. Like as much as I know, she wants to be out there. It's it's good to know that it's not you know some type of sand falling in the hourglass. Like when you're gonna hurry up and get back, right? And, and save us. So um, yeah, just talk to me about this one. Yeah, for me, it started and ended with a uh, aggressive Skyler is here, right? Unfortunately, kind of sometimes, I guess I'm trying to figure out the right way. Unfortunately, these are the events that had to lead up to it for, mm-hmm. for her to kind of like, I need to be on in attack mode. And we saw it. They're a totally different team. We saw it. It just felt different. Obviously, it looked different with her. You know, as soon as the screens were set, the, the shot was going up. Versus in past games, you know, BG has set the screen. And he's still kind of waiting to see what BG's about to do. There wasn't any, any hesitating. Screen got set, she was pulling. 
And I love the way that she got downhill and attacked the basket. She was just aggressive, and it was good to see. And, you know, hopefully Phoenix kind of gets to find that balance. Um, well, she's able to find that balance with Phoenix, and that this is what she needs to do. Obviously, there's going to be nights where, you know, when DT gets back or Hartley's going off or BG's going off and you fall back, play point guard or whatnot. But right now, this is this is what your team requires of you to come out with this aggressive type mindset. And that was really it for me. I was happy that uh, Sabali's ankle injury, we almost had like a trend tonight where it was about to be, what, the, the first three picks or – Three of the first four picks of this past year's draft got ankle injuries. Um, right. Sad to returned. Uh, and like you said, uh, I'm still I, – I still like watching Dallas, man. It's fun seeing where you can see where Agler has a lot to work with. And once again, just want to shout out Kayla Thornton for the job she's doing for them on, uh, you know, being the super glue person, uh, guarding one through five, providing offense, and just being a steady hand with so much youth around her. But, uh, yeah. For the Mercury, hey, uh, Skyler had her. I'm here again, and now you know they just need more of that. I right, uh, going to the last game of the night: Chicago Sky versus Seattle Storm. Uh, man, this this was just wire wire ass whooping from Seattle. Uh, they got the 89-71 win. Um, this <sighs> Brianna Stewart, man. 25 points, five rebounds, six assists. You know, last night we talked about Asia Wilson, but, you know, if we're going to have that conversation early as far as MVP goes, Stewie got to be there too. You know, uh, Seattle 7-1, and one. <laughs> man, they just, they just getting it done, man, especially with, um, with Sue Bird being out. You know, they really leaned on Stewie a little bit more. I mean, they're, they're a deep team, but, you know, of course she's the engine. Um, Sammy Whitcomb, 17 points, six assists. Uh, Seattle just started off with the "this is our game" attitude. They won the first quarter, thirty-three to eighteen, and Chicago was just playing catch up. You know, they they showed some life in the third quarter, but it was it was just too late. Um, speaking of uh, awards, uh, Cheyenne Parker got to be the early on favorite for most improved. Oh man! Um, so quick plug, real quick. Cheyenne Parker made my list of opportunity knocks for our second episode. WNBA Outlook, which will be up on our Patreon very soon. But, uh, yes, she is definitely up there. Um, look, man, uh, for me, it, it, I know Seattle got off to that great start. And there were two MVP candidates in this game because I want to make sure that Vanda Schlute gets her credit because folks mm -hmm. Absolutely. on a regular basis kind of just ignore her contributions to the game. Obviously, this wasn't a great night for her, but I'm not going to be like, Let's forget about her and ignore her or leave her out of the conversation. We're going to mention one of the MVP candidates, got to mention the other. Um, it was just turnovers, man. These, these are the things we, we, uh, we've we we've watched a couple Seattle games this year. I know I've watched a bunch. I know you've watched a bunch. You can't turn the ball over against them. This is what you just can't do. They already play at a high pace, and we know Chicago likes to run too, but it's kind of more controlled running with Chicago because – Sloot has her, her, you know, she has control over all of what they're doing, right? And it was just live ball turnovers, man. It just felt like at times Chicago was just, it felt like they got sped up. And it wasn't Slooty. It just felt like others got sped up at times. Bad mm -hmm. decisions were made. And, you know, again, let Seattle get the run in. And it's a hard hole to climb out of because they have the offense to continue to execute in the half court. Um, I wasn't surprised that Chicago fought back. Uh, both teams had five players in double figures, just to give an example of the type of talent both teams have. But it was just the turnovers, man. Um, you mentioned Cheyenne Parker. Uh, it's fun watching Ruthie Hebert come along as well. And Stewie's a tough matchup for their front court at times. And you, you know, they got Azare, they got Cheyenne Parker, they had Hebert at times. And I think I like what Seattle did. They did a great job of kind of hitting Stewie on the move where she's mm -hmm. already going, and she was able to finish a couple times like that. But um, it was just the turnovers, man. I don't feel any differently about Chicago <laughs> than I did before this game. Uh, it's <laughs> not an indictment to be made. I hope folks don't go, oh, my gosh, you know, they lost by 18. They're, they can't be taken serious. Nah, it's, 
it's a game. It's it's one night. And the other thing is like, you know, regardless of the, you know, I know how Seattle started. I feel like Seattle can can sustain how they've been playing or whatever, right? Until we get to the postseason. For a lot of other teams, it's about peaking at the right time. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of teams are going through their own little bits of adversity. There, we don't know. Seattle's there's time for Seattle to go through some adversity. You know, like there there's still time. Um, but yeah, man, it was just a lot of turnovers against a really good team, and that's something you can't do. It's, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. man. Like you know, it's it, it's one it's one thing if you know Seattle was just living off the turnovers and scoring in transition, but you know you combine the turnovers with them getting easy runouts, then with them executing in the half court, like it's not it's not much you can do with that. You know they they put you in a position where you basically got to be close to perfect to to beat them. Um, you know if if you're deficient in any one area. They're going to take advantage, and you're going to end up with a result like this one. But, um, yeah, man, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Uh, as always, you're going to see a lot of us. Uh, don't get tired of us. Stick with us through this whole thing. It's going to be a long ride, but we're here for it. Yes, All right, man, yes, thanks yes, a lot. Yes. See you guys tomorrow. <laughs>